Welcome back to SCI Insight. Don't forget to subscribe. Eight dramatic transitions drive Big History's 13.7 billion year story. We call these major thresholds of increasing complexity. They're times when the right ingredients combined with just the right conditions to enable the creation of an entirely new form of complexity. When our universe appeared, it was simple and, from our perspective, frankly, a bit boring. There were no stars, no planets, no life, and certainly no humans. And yet, look around, and you'll see amazing complexity. A sky filled with stars and galaxies in all stages of development. You'll see a solar system formed by the remnants of stars that were born and died billions of years ago. You'll see our own Earth filled with mountains and rivers, deep caverns and vast oceans, and incredible biodiversity. And you'll see our own innovative species with our computers, airplanes and skyscrapers, and our endless art and invention. Eight thresholds explain how a relatively simple universe transformed into the rich complexity that's all around us today. Each threshold builds upon the previous one. Together, they help explain where everything came from. They help explain our own place in the universe and where things may be heading. Today, much of the universe is still pretty simple, with large tracts of empty space. We'll see how complex things appeared in special regions, regions where the ingredients and the Goldilocks conditions were just right to cross new thresholds of complexity. Step by step, we'll see how new forms of complexity appeared, each with components and qualities that had never been seen before, leading to the world we live in today. Our first threshold is the Big Bang, which happened about 13.7 billion years ago and led to the creation of the entire universe. We don't know much about the ingredients and the Goldilocks conditions that led to this first threshold because we just don't have much evidence. For example, what made the Big Bang possible? We don't know. Why did the Big Bang happen? We can only speculate. Was there even space and time before the Big Bang? We don't know that either. What we do know is that the Big Bang provided the raw materials for everything around us today. After the Big Bang, there was space, which was rapidly expanding, and there was time. There was also matter and energy. At first, the universe was so hot that you couldn't tell the difference between matter and energy. But within the first billionth of a second after the Big Bang, matter and energy separated. Then, energy took different forms, including gravity, and electromagnetism. And matter appeared in the form of electrons and quarks, and quarks soon linked up to form protons and neutrons. Why is this so important? Because nothing had turned into something. And that something contained everything needed to build an interesting universe, one that could eventually include you and me. Now let's take a closer look at how our universe began to build more complex things. Right after the Big Bang, our young universe was what scientists call a plasma. This was basically an incredibly hot mush of charged particles without much structure or complexity. About 380,000 years later, things began to change. By then, temperatures had fallen low enough for protons, which have positive charges, to link up with electrons, which have negative charges. And together, they formed electrically neutral atoms. Very simple ones, like hydrogen, some helium, and a few slightly heavier atoms thrown in for good measure. The universe now contained vast clouds of these atoms. Add gravity, and now you have the ingredients for our second threshold, the formation of stars. Here's what happened next. Wherever there is slightly more matter, 
gravity is more powerful. So tiny variations in the density of matter became the first Goldilocks condition for this second threshold. Gravity packed slightly denser regions ever closer together, squashing them so tightly that they began to heat up. This growing pressure and heat created our second Goldilocks condition. Eventually the clouds got so hot that protons and electrons split apart once more, recreating a plasma. And when temperatures in these hot spots got to about 10 million degrees Celsius, protons began to fuse together. And part of them turned into energy as they did so. This huge release of heat from the center of each cloud of matter stopped the cloud from collapsing any further. And this is how the first stars lit up. Soon, the universe had billions of hot spots pouring energy into the cold of deep space. Each star would continue releasing energy into space for millions or even billions of years until it had no more protons to fuse. And as these stars formed, so did galaxies, each containing billions of stars. Galaxies in turn grouped together into huge clusters and chains of galaxies, the largest structures in the universe. Suddenly, the universe seemed to have a lot more variety and a lot more structure. Now, what new things could happen in a universe filled with stars? After threshold two, the universe had lots of stars, but most of space was still cold, dark, and mostly empty. The universe consisted almost entirely of two types of atomic matter, hydrogen and helium. These were both light gases, and one of them was totally inert. Like a painter with just two colors, one of which won't mix, it was impossible to make anything very interesting. The universe needed more colors, more chemical elements. And that was the work of Threshold 3. Making new elements meant fusing more protons and neutrons together. To do that, you needed very high temperatures, which could only be found inside massive stars that were aging or dying. Only they have the right Goldilocks conditions for Threshold 3. Why? Well, Large stars have so much mass that they can create enormous pressures and temperatures. Those temperatures get cranked even higher when large stars run out of hydrogen. When that happens, fusion stops at the center and the star collapses like a burst balloon. If the star is big enough, the collapse is huge, creating such high temperatures that helium nuclei can fuse into nuclei of carbon. When the star has used up its helium, it collapses again, and the cycle starts over. The star heats up and starts to fuse carbon to form oxygen. It collapses again, then does the same to create other elements like silicon, nitrogen, and eventually iron. If it's a really, really big star, it'll finally die in what's called a supernova. That's an explosion so hot and so energetic that for a while, it'll shine like an entire galaxy and it'll produce enough heat to form all the other elements of the periodic table. Then the supernova scatters these new elements into space, and voila, we have a universe with lots of different elements. Threshold three was crossed for the first time when the first large star died, and it's still being crossed today, as billions upon billions of large stars die scattering the raw materials needed to build wondrous new forms of complexity.